So if you're from the UK and you've got friends and family at school who were building up to the GCSEs, then this video is essentially an advert for my new educational channel that I've linked into the description. Um, if that doesn't involve you, you're probably not going to want to watch this video. But what's going to follow is a video on mitosis, which is going to show you exactly what the quality of the videos on my new educational channel is going to be like. If you think that someone that you know could benefit from that, then please click the link in the description uh, and subscribe or, or pass the link onto them. Um, and if not, that's absolutely fine. This new channel will have literally nothing to do with any conspiracy, any flat earth, anything like that. It will cover science, maths, and astronomy GCSE uh, from the start of the course to the end of the course. Uh, and this is just a taster for what's to come. Oh yeah, just a quick disclaimer. This video is a GCSE level video. So if you know a lot about mitosis, you will know that there is a lot being left out here. But what is contained in this video is exactly what a GCSE pupil needs to know. So if you found your way to this video, it's probably because you're looking for revision tips on mitosis at GCSE. And I understand that because mitosis, when we first start to learn it, can be quite intimidating. Yeah, and boring. There's a lot of big key words. It's confusing. There's a long-winded process that we've got to wrap our head around. So let's see if I can demystify it a little bit for you because it really isn't as hard as you might think. Okay, slaphead, let's go. Let's start here. What is the purpose of mitosis? Well, whoever you are, we all start off in the same position, a single fertilized egg. We all start off as one cell, but we end up as organisms with trillions of cells. So there must be a mechanism that allows that one cell to go from one to two to four to eight. And at the minute, that's what we're going to think of mitosis as. We're going to think of it as the mechanism that allows us to produce new cells. That will not be the definition we end up with. Stick around for the proper definition that you need to use. Okay, so mitosis is used for growth. Right, got ya. Anyway, let's take a look at our first stage of mitosis. You may hear uh, at school or see on some websites the term resting phase for the first step of mitosis. We will never use that term. The term we will use is interphase. So interphase, yeah, is another name for resting phase, but we use interphase because the cell isn't resting. What's happening at the very beginning of mitosis is that the chromosomes, the genetic material inside that nucleus, start to be copied. Now, this is a diploid nucleus, like all body cells. Uh, it has 46 chromosomes inside, and each one is being duplicated. But the copy stays stuck to the original chromosome. So you can think of it as having 46 pairs of chromosomes stuck together, and we call those sister chromatids. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the bit where the sister chromatids are joined together is called the centromere. I remember that. Well done. You got a big nose. Now, these chromosomes, these sister chromatids, are useless while they're stuck in that nucleus. We want to have 46 of them um, at the top of the cell and 46 at the bottom so we can start packaging them in new nuclei and making two new cells. At the minute, being stuck in that nucleus isn't doing them any favours. So to summarise, interphase is where we copy the genetic material. Got it. So we move on to the next step, which is called prophase. The next step is where the nuclear membrane itself breaks down and those chromosomes can be seen. And if you see that on a, an exam paper, you'll be given pictures of different stages of mitosis and be told to uh, maybe label each one. Well, prophase is going to be the picture where all of those chromosomes are in the middle of the cell where you'd imagine the nucleus to be. But the nucleus isn't there anymore, it's broken down. Wow, amazing. Another mark of prophase is that we start to produce these short string-like structures that we're going to call spindle fibres. Now, once the production of those has begun and the nuclear membrane has properly broken down, that's the end of prophase. But we move on to the next step. Because that nucleus has now been broken down, these sister chromatids are free to move around the cell. And they line themselves up along the middle. Now those string-like structures are the spindle fibres we spoke about in prophase. Their production has now been complete. And you can see that they are reaching out from either side of the cell. And from the top, they are grabbing hold of 46 chromatids. And from the bottom, they are grabbing hold of 46 chromatids. Once we get to this stage, we say we've entered metaphase. God, this is boring. Anyway, let's recap. Interphase, we copy the DNA. Prophase, the nucleus disappears and we start making these spindly fibres. In metaphase, the chromatids are all along the middle and the fibres are grabbing hold of them. How's that? It's really good, mate. Well done. Oh, thanks. Uh, by the way, 
I just pooed in your shoes. Now, the next step is for these spindle fibers to pull those sister chromatids apart, just to snap them in two. And 46 chromosomes are now being pulled to the top of the cell, and 46 chromosomes are now being pulled to the bottom of the cell. Once we're in this stage, we call that anaphase. Now, we want to take those 46 chromosomes and we want to package them in new nuclei, like this. And once those new nuclei have been formed, we now say we finished telophase. These two nuclei are going to be genetically identical to each other. If we remember tracing back to um, interphase right at the very beginning, the genetic material that is in these two nuclei is going to be identical to what was in that original cell. So we say that these are genetically identical nuclei. That will be important when we build our definition for mitosis in a minute. But for now, we've still only got one cell and we want two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because mitosis only produces two cells. So don't get confused with meiosis, which is another video. Meiosis produces four, but mitosis only makes two cells. So the cell membrane helps us by pinching in the middle, a little bit like this. It pinches inwards. And when it pinches all the way, that causes a cell to literally physically split into two cells. We call that process cytokinesis. So just a bit of a recap, interphase is where our genetic material is duplicated. Then in prophase, the nuclear membrane breaks down and we start the production of these spindle fibers. In metaphase, our sister chromatids line up across the middle of the cell and the spindle fibers uh, grow out from each side uh, or complete their growth and grab hold of a sister chromatid each. In anaphase, they are pulled apart, 46 to the top, 46 to the bottom. <laughs> he said bottom. In telophase, they are packaged in new nuclei. And then in cytokinesis, the cell membrane pinches apart and we have two new cells. But we use a term genetically identical before. So let's complete our definition for mitosis. Mitosis starts off with a single parent cell. This parent cell produces two new cells that we're gonna call daughter cells. But these daughter cells are genetically identical. So my definition for mitosis is the production of two genetically identical daughter cells from one parent cell. Do not fall into the trap that some of my pupils have fallen into in the past where we say things like mitosis is growth or mitosis is repair because it isn't. Mitosis is used for growth. Mitosis is used for repair. But mitosis is the production of two genetically identical daughter cells from one parent cell. Mitosis also has another use. This is a green fly. Green flies reproduce asexually. Asexual reproduction means that you don't need um, a, a male. This female has offspring all on her own. Parthenogenesis, virgin birth, okay? The reason she can do this is because inside her reproductive organisms, mitosis takes place. And her offspring are produced by mitosis. In other words, they are genetically identical to the parent. They are clones. So. To recap, mitosis is not now only used for, uh, I'll start again, mitosis is not only now used for growth, it is used for repair, and in some organisms it's used for asexual reproduction. And it causes the production of two genetically identical daughter cells from one parent cell. And that is it. Hope that helped. Okay, let's just summarise what that boar guy with the big nose just said. He said that mitosis is a way of getting from one cell to having more cells. So we can't call mitosis growth, but it can be used for growth. Uh, it can also be used for asexual reproduction too. Um, so essentially we've got four phases. We've got interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Uh, that's five phases. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, can we edit that bit out? Yeah, I absolutely promise you I'll edit that bit out. Cool, okay. So essentially what the what the processes in mitosis do is they take the dna and copy it and then allow you to put it into two new nuclei so when the cell is split we can then have two genetically identical daughter cells have i got that right absolutely spot on brilliant what's the tea uh mashed potato oh what a letdown